I just wanted to know because I know subpoena form was filled out. It's so okay. I, if I want her to be here, she's going to be here. I agree with so the just, state just that, know that. Uh, she could certainly appear. It ain't even got to be no arrangement. All I got to say is come, she's going to come. <laughs> That's simple. Mr. Brooks, do you intend to call her as a witness? Because I'm directing yeah, you to said, have her here. We and so again, we can Mr. open Brooks the door. On, we can open the door on how old she told me she was. Interrupting. We can ask you that question too. Then over the top. Do you know that? I see the whole strategy here by the prosecution. I, I see right through it. This is argument on your part, sir. It is pure commentary I just want, I just at this point. I want that on the record. I see through it. And your nice see try, through. But I see through it. So she alleged got record of Abel Westcott. Stop talking. One more interruption, and you're going to be removed to the next courtroom. That's what you want to do anyway. All right, I need to take a break. This man right now is having a stare down with me. It's very disrespectful. He pounded his fist. Frankly, it makes me scared. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide, as charged in count one of the information. Daryl Brooks Jr., the Milwaukee resident who was found guilty of six counts of first-degree intentional homicide after crashing his SUV into a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin on November 21, 2021, was sentenced on Wednesday, November 16. He received six consecutive life sentences on counts one through six, one for each of the people he slayed, with the judge commenting that Brooks had no empathy or remorse. You left a path of destruction, chaos, death, Injury, confusion, and panic. Frankly, Mr. Brooks, no one is safe from you. This community can only be safe if you are behind bars for the rest of your life. The community is not safe from your violent and criminal conduct unless you are in custody. Today, we look at the most outrageous moments from this crazy trial. Number 10, the strip down. On the first day of the court case, Brooks started what would be his common practice of interrupting Judge Jennifer Doro. This would result in being removed from the main courtroom and placed in an adjacent room with the video camera where he could be muted. Upset at being kicked out, Brooks protested by taking off his prison shirt and facing away from the camera. The moment he is muted, uh, because of the way that he was removed from the courtroom this morning alone, he started interrupting this court within a minute of the court calling the case. I have required that the sheriff's department uh, file a written report with the court. Um, he has shown a complete and utter disrespect for the simple rules of civility. Number nine, Brooks' absurd question to eyewitness. Brooks asked Alyssa Kajewski, who was participating in the parade with the extreme dance team, how could she know the people she saw laying on the ground was because he ran them over with the SUV. Kajewski testified she was able to avoid being hit by the vehicle, but due shock, she momentarily blacked out. So at that point, it would be fair to say that you didn't know if the people on the ground or in the air or whatnot were in fact struck by a vehicle, Brooks asked. Well, I did know it was the vehicle because I turned around and I saw the vehicle coming towards them, and then I think I blacked out until they were in the air or on the ground, Kajewski replied. Yeah, there was a truck. What kind of truck? Uh, it was pickup a, truck. Yes, so there was a car that drove through. Is it the same vehicle that you remember seeing that day? Yes. In regards to your dance team, did you observe anyone struck? I remember seeing bodies in the air and on the ground. I just remember seeing um, bodies in the air, but I can't say I remember seeing a vehicle hit them. So. At that point, it would be fair to say that you didn't know if you were in fact struck by a vehicle. Well, I did know it was the vehicle because I turned around and I saw the vehicle coming towards them. By blacked out, what do you mean by that? State that what that means for the jury and for the record. Was that the first time that you ever had a blackout? Yeah. When I say blackout, I mean I can't visualize it, but I can hear it happening. So it's never happened before that day? Never. Any idea what caused it on that occasion? Stress. Shock. And you stated that you uh, got into an uh, ambulance and with 
A squad car, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a squad. You left at that point. Yeah. Number eight. Brooks doesn't identify by Daryl Brooks. Another way Brooks tried to say the attack was not his fault was by claiming that he was not Daryl Brooks. Every day of the trial, Brooks would say he did not consent to being called by that name and he does not know anyone by that name. He would repeat that line even when eyewitnesses identified him during questioning. During closing arguments, the prosecution put the ridiculous claim to rest. And he kept asking people about the tints on the window. Well, guess what, folks? You don't need to see the tints on the window when the windows are rolled down. That is also Daryl Brooks driving in the parade. And so is that. And there's clearly one person in that vehicle in every one of these photos. And it's that man on his identification card issued by the state of Wisconsin. Daryl Edward Brooks Jr., date of birth 221-1982. And how did you come to that conclusion, the, the you conclusion? I'm looking at you. Uh, where you and I were standing in the same yard looking at each other. Is it possible you saw something on the news? No, I had no idea who you were. Would it be fair to say that since you keep identifying me as you, would it be fair to say that I'm not 5'9", nor 160 pounds? I don't know, we were a lot closer. Does it look like I'm 160 pounds? Number seven, Brooks builds box forts. During one of the times Brooks was sent to another room for being disruptive. If we take down snow permit? he decided to use boxes containing legal documents to make a fort to block his face from the camera. Doro ordered the fort to be taken down because she could not see what he was doing. Shortly thereafter, he built a second fort using three boxes. The second construction was also taken down promptly. If the bailiff could confirm, well, he put him on top, he put him on the floor. That's his right. Mr. Brooks is muted because he wants to continue to debate with this court about my prior ruling. I know he's muted, but I can certainly hear him from this side. He appears to be yelling at the top of his lungs. Number six, Brooks and offender. Brooks became visibly agitated when the prosecution stated that if he continued with a line of questioning to make his ex-girlfriend appear to be a bad mother, then they'd be forced to reveal the fact that he is, in fact, an offender to the jury. That's a lie. We gonna open the door on that. Nah, since he wants to make a record and not be accurate. So let's be accurate on the record since you think you know so much, so we can open on how old she told she was when we met, Brooks screamed, forcing an early recess. So if there's any causation that would lead to Erica Patterson being a bad mom, Mr. Brooks has a direct role in that causation. Once so again, Mr. Brooks is being loud, disrespectful, me she was interrupting, we can ask that question he is for me. No, because that's a lie. Let him finish. Let him finish, Mr. Brooks. We're going to open the Mr. door on that. No, since he want to make a record and not be accurate, so let's be ac accurate on the record since you think you know so much. Number five, burn in hell, you piece of s***. <laughs> when the guilty verdicts were being read on Wednesday, someone attending the hearing shouted at Brooks, burn in hell, you piece of s***. Burn in hell, you piece of Hey, you are to be removed right now. You will not do that. Number four, strapped to a wheelchair. Less than 24 hours after a Waukesha judge sentenced Daryl Brooks to six consecutive life sentences for the parade attack last November, Brooks was back in court Thursday, this time in Milwaukee and strapped to a wheelchair. Number three, Brooks's mom speaks on his behalf. Dawn Woods, Brooks's mother, was the first to speak on his behalf prior to the sentencing. She touched on mental illness, describing it as the dirty little secret in families that they don't want to talk about. This surely stirred up some feelings, as Brooks could be seen crying while listening to his mom speak. They, all they want is to be free of their illness and become mentally well. We are our brother's keepers. And I also want to say to the families who lost loved ones, I believe as society, we have an obligation to help those. Number two, Daryl Brooks speaks at sentencing. Daryl Brooks made his statement at his sentencing in Waukesha County Court on Wednesday, November 16, following his conviction on charges tied to the Waukesha Christmas Parade attack in November 2021. He spoke for about two hours before the judge said they were moving on. But I refuse to get in a name calling. I don't respect how you did your job. And I never will. I refuse to raise my voice. I refuse to do any of that. The part of me that I don't understand why it goes the way it goes, 
and I realized that last night. Had every intention of coming here and, 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 and lay into you. Out of frustration and out of the fact of feeling that I needed to defend myself by some of the things you said. How you had the audacity to speak on situations that had nothing to do with this tragedy. Number one, locked up for life in prison. Daryl Brooks was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of extended supervision and will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Judge Jennifer Doro threw the book at Brooks Wednesday, November 16, handing down the maximum sentence, drawing applause from the courtroom filled with victims and their families. He got life without extended supervision for each of the six first-degree intentional homicide charges after taking the lives of Jane Kulik, Jackson Sparks, Bill Hospel, Tamara Durand, Lee Owen, and Virginia Sorensen. On 61 counts of first-degree recklessly endangering safety, Doro gave him 12.5 years of initial confinement, plus 5 years of extended supervision. That's 762.5 years in prison. On 6 counts of felony hit and run, Doro gave him 15 years of initial confinement, plus 10 years of extended supervision. That's 90 years in prison. On 2 counts of felony bail jumping, Doro gave him 3 years of initial confinement, and 3 years of extended supervision. That's 6 years. On the one count of misdemeanor battery, he was sentenced to nine months. Doro ordered the sentences for counts 68 to 73 concurrent. That wipes 90 years from the total. She also ordered counts 74 and 75 be consecutive to all other charges, but concurrent to one another, which knocks that down to three years. That brings the total to 766 years and three months in prison, in addition to the six consecutive life sentences. I'll rise for the jury, please. Dated this 26th day of October 2022, signed by the foreperson. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Your daughter injured in any way during this uh, incident? No, we were not. 